works. People are changed a little bit by what we learn from the process of doing science. What we're really interested in is breaking the light up into its colors, its components. Astronomy is really different than other laboratory sciences in that we don't actually have our hands on the things we want to study. We can't actually go out and look. And so what we have to look for are telltale signs. It's like looking at the fingerprint of the chemicals that make up the stuff that sent the light. So if you look at its spectrum, then you can say how fast it's moving, what it's made out of, how old it is. You get a, a huge amount of information. So that's the power of spectroscopy. In order to stay competitive, observatories need to build large telescopes and compete with their peers. In the 1980s, uh, UT and McDonald Observatory became involved in a project which uh, is now called the Hobby Everly Telescope. The uh, HET, which we call for short, is currently the fourth largest telescope in the world and the largest telescope in the continental United States. The original name for the Hobby Everly Telescope was the Spix Survey Telescope. From the beginning, it's been designed to do spectroscopy. What you see here are 91 identical mirrors. They're made out of a very special glass called Zeradurit. All 91 have three motors on the back of each one that, uh, that very accurately positions each mirror. And then there are sensors around the periphery that accurately locate them with respect to one another. So imagine 91 people standing out in the middle of a, of a field trying to catch light from a source and direct it to one place. And that's a small problem compared to what we have here. Of the six observatories I've worked at, this is the most complicated telescope to operate. We discover planets in other solar systems tonight, two planet candidates being investigated, uh, the discovery of planets in solar systems that are not ours. If folks are interested in that kind of thing, this is a very interesting place to be. The Hobby Everly Telescope looks like no other telescope in the world. It doesn't have an eyepiece anywhere. It isn't even capable of holding an eyepiece anywhere. So how's the grok? Uh, looks pretty good right now. At the moment, uh, I'm sitting in the control room for the Hobby Everly Telescope, and it requires its operator to run the telescope, sort of like a pilot running an airplane. And the astronomer is more like the navigator. Oh, that looks pretty decent. Well, that's, that's galaxies. Oh, the image of an astronomer sitting out in the cold all night long, uh, looking at a star, just doesn't exist anymore. HET will be the site of our next major project at McDonald, which is to study uh, dark energy in the universe, a project we call the HET Dark Energy Experiment. What is dark energy? <laughs> well, we don't know what dark energy <laughs> is, do we? And I don't think anyone uh, would say they did. It's a little bit like the Dark Ages. We don't, didn't really know very much about the history of the Dark Ages, so we called them dark. Um, it's called energy because it, it pushes back because it is counteracting the gravity and pushing the universe apart, but really it's just a name for the phenomenon of the accelerating expansion of the universe. We have no way to observe it, and we, we know nothing about it. It may not be dark, it may not be energy, <laughs> but that's the name we have for it. <laughs> and and, and the, the person who named it dark energy has said most clearly it's just a placeholder for whatever's going on. And whatever dark energy is, it is going to be a fundamental shift in our understanding of the basic laws of physics. It represents over 75% of the energy in the universe now. You cannot make a model of the universe without understanding what dark energy is. It relates to where our universe came from and where it's going, and how you make galaxies, how you make stars, how you make us. We're starting off with a, a preliminary study here using the smaller telescope, the 107 inch telescope. We're using this to refine our engineering understanding of the instrument that we're going to use. So we have a prototype of the instrument here. Once we understand this, uh, we will place 145 copies of this instrument onto the Hobby Ebley telescope. So it's like having a hundred instruments strapped to the top of the telescope will be able to study thousands of objects all at the same time. Eventually what we'll do is we'll survey a huge chunk of the sky 
a block of the sky and look at every object down to the faintest objects that can be observed. Our goal is to observe between one and two million galaxies. What sets us apart is the spectrograph, and that is what is helping us determine the expansion rate of the universe. So it's the spectrograph that is the key here. In a sense, the uh, evolution of dark energy might really be the holy grail in, in all of this. We're going to do one of these fundamental measurements that humankind sort of makes once. We're going to measure exactly how the universe has expanded through time with so much precision that essentially from then on it'll be the touchstone for all future theories. We have to find about a million objects and we have about two. So it's, it's two down, 999,998 to go. There's just a whole lot of things astronomers study. You got comets, asteroids, black holes, stars, star clusters, galaxies, gas clouds in space called nebula. Yellow is the color. I think one of the characteristics astronomers have is a great curiosity about nature and about the universe and a desire to study it and learn what's out there. I've been an amateur astronomer since I was a little kid, and I still go out on good nights and with my telescopes and have fun, so it, it never gets old. When I actually became an astronomer and started analyzing data and not looking through a telescope, but looking at the results of the light passing through the telescope, the mysteries of looking up in the nighttime sky were just replaced by the mysteries of how stars form, so it's just a new passion. Where did we come from? Where did our solar system come from? Where did the universe start? Where is it going to end? It's a slight embarrassment for those of us who work in cosmology that we fundamentally have so little understanding of the universe we live in. But also, it's a very exciting period to be in, because uh, there's a hope of actually answering these questions in the coming decade or two. It certainly has us very excited. I tend to have conversations on a more universal context with visitors about where we are, uh, and about how uh, very little that still today we know about what we're a part of. And uh, yet science is something that is self-correcting. It's something that constantly fosters us to ask more and more fundamental questions and is a uh, wonderful thing to be a part of.